Good morning. And welcome to second session of clinical aspects of thorax. Now, instead of writing that, okay, we'll be watching CT scan and then x-rays and then tension pneumothorax and pneumothorax and traumatic pneumothorax and, and pediatric pneumothorax. So I, I thought of writing lots of interesting stuff, right? So there'll be, there'll be lots of interesting stuff at the same time, you'll be able to actually diagnose the cases, right? So that's why first we'll discuss the basic fundamental aspects and then I'll be releasing the complete library. There'll be lots and lots of x-ray, CT scan, right, everything. And guaranteed, you'll be able to diagnose the condition beyond doubt, right? You will never ever miss the pneumothorax, the type of pneumothorax and the management part, right? So let's start. Ah, uh, yes, one thing which I wanted to say. See, I receive emails, right? You write that it was good. Means I'm, I'm really thankful for all those, those your appreciation. But uh, can I request something? See, what happens is that in our videos, say in spite of hundreds of views, the likes are about one or two. Comments are sometimes, in most of the cases, the comments are zero, right? There are no comments. Now, say someone who is, may, uh, say, from the creator side, what I'm telling is that when you write comments over here, so that would that would attract even people, those who are not in our group, right? Even others would see, others would appreciate. And, and sometimes I feel that it is needed, right? So I'm not telling that you just write good only in case if you feel like, no, this is not good or you, we need to make some changes because today uh, morning only, I, I replied to one, one uh, female that uh, it was about our previous video way back right which was about the subliminal system that is how to lower your blood pressure so she said that i am finding the music is too loud so i said fine right that is something which I, where i learn i said in the next videos i'll keep the music volume a bit low so in in every video i don't say that please subscribe and comments and like and this but when I was, today I was analyzing the videos, so there were hardly any comments. While, while if you really see the number of emails, so they were many. Now, same thing can be written in the comment section. So, as such, it won't be like, uh, say, we want that sort of publicity. But, but, say, from the heart, it feels good, right? That's, that's what I say. Anyway, so... Because it is like I, I felt a bit bad that this I am telling about fourth time or third time. So why should I really say it again and again, right? So so I am not forcing, but just telling from heart. Okay, chalo. let's start with the thorax part, right? The clinical aspect. And today we'll be focusing on, on injury, right? On injury. Because all these conditions, they are actually related to injury. And injuries, they are emergencies. Right? They are emergency. And in emergency, first thing which you have to do is, you have to keep your head cool. Right? Keep a cool head. The reason is that those who are really requiring the emergency treatment, they will be sitting silently. And those who can be attended after a few minutes, they'll be shouting. This is what really happens in case of thoracic injuries, right? Because the person who is having tension pneumothorax, he is breathing so shallow, right? And today we'll be understanding it in depth and then we'll see the reports, we'll see the images, right? So where your, your involvement is vital. So let's start with injury, right? Two things. So let's say if it is a rib fracture, right? It is a rib fracture. So when it is a rib fracture, few things they can be noticed. One, when it comes to rib number one, rib number 10, rib number 11 and rib number 12, right? This is rare, first of all. Right? You, you don't find these things very frequently. So, it is relatively rare. 
when can it happen it can happen when there is very high velocity impact right very high velocity impact so whether that high velocity right high speed right high velocity impact then and then these ribs velocity or speed impact right then and then these ribs can break now when it comes to let's say rib number one in case if it breaks you find that okay rib number one is broken first thing which you look for is that it is okay now rib is not important because this is the rib which will be in close approximation to your major vessel subclavian vessels correct subclavian artery and subclavian veins subclavian vessels in upper limb you'll find that the entire brachial plexus is going from there so if anything brachial plexus is broken right immediately the hand would be affected so that is needed see the brachial plexus right the plexus which is supplying to the entire upper limb right that is affected and third thing which you'll see that the apex of lung right this we have seen in dissection right it, it projects upward so that apex of lung can be damaged punctured so apex of lung so these are the areas which you have to look for because otherwise we see okay rib number one fractured okay, right that diagnosis is easy but this is what is needed now same thing happens say 10 11 12 ribs now if they are broken right again these are like floating ribs and lower most ribs so that's why the impact has to be extremely powerful to break them because it's another end is floating right so it, it will easily move but if it has damaged it will it will sorry it will lead to damage of something very grave injuries right if it is on right side if it is on right side so then right side that entire portion is covered is occupied by liver there would be liver injury liver injury and liver is highly vascular so again so dangerous if it is on left side right this is usually because of lati right if someone hits that lati at a very or hockey right so on left side spleen splenic injury or the spleen is injured and spleen is again highly vascular right so when that thing happens it bleeds one might have to go for splenectomy one has to remove the spleen right so these are some areas where you have to take care of it right let's write things over here another thing which we have seen in more detail yeah? yesterday we talked about flail chest right flail chest when the injury when the multiple ribs are broken right technically speaking when three plus ribs broken right and this is at two locations at least at two locations at least at two points two sets and we saw that that what was it associated with it was associated with pulmonary pulmonary contusion correct and there was one more thing pulmonary contusion and there was one more thing and that was subcutaneous emphysema right we have seen that subcutaneous emphysema and we have seen that pulmonary contusion in pulmonary contusion do remember that the outer skin is fine right there is not much of the injury right it is not stab right today we'll be watching even the stab injuries so but this is what really happens in case of flail chest and in flail chest that paradoxical breathing right that would be the key word paradoxical breathing paradoxical is breathing style which is ulta of the normal right which is reverse of the normal yesterday we talked about it and do remember that this is a late sign right this is a late sign so if you see such case and then when you mark so you'll find that yes paradoxical breathing is something which is occurring what should be done right yes for the management for the management what should be done in such cases one you should be giving positive pressure ventilation it is called as the positive positive pressure ventilation so that means you are giving oxygen right you are giving oxygen this is also needed when in the cases of uh, acute myocardial infarction so why it is needed because see 
the lung is collapsed. So now there is very less surface area. So that's the reason you have to push that oxygen with pressure, right? So that it actually goes into the circulation. So this is positive pressure ventilation. This is a special extra setting, right? And it should not be continuous, right? Else it will start damaging the lungs. So it is, it has to be intermittent, intermittent. You give it for some time, stop it, then one normal, then one second continue, right? So this is intermittent positive pressure ventilation. And obviously the surgery, right? Surgery is needed in order to repair rest of the structures. Okay, let's move on to the pneumothorax. Now from this point onwards, we'll write the pneumothorax the way we write in our clinical notes, right? It is PTX. This is how it would be written. So in many of the x-rays, you'll find that we write just PTX, right? So this is pneumothorax, okay? And in pneumothorax, this pneumo means it is air and thorax, that means what we mean is plural cavity, right? Plural cavity. And we have talked a lot about it, that between parietal and visceral pleura, and it leads to, right, air into that space, right? Normally filled with fluid, and it is just 5 to 10 ml of fluid. So if there is that fluid increases, so then we call it plural effusion. But when it en air enters, right, so then it is the pneumothorax, okay. Complications, yes, it can lead to lung collapse. Right? Till this point, though, we have talked about it. Now today, we'll be diving a bit deep, right. So it can lead to lung collapse. So we'll not be restricting ourselves only to lung collapse. When it comes to pneumothorax, you have to see that it is divided into two major types, right? Two major types. So, yeah, you can see it like classification, classification. But classification word is just for the theory, but otherwise understand it like this. That pneumothorax, when the pneumothorax is occurring without any reason or we are unable to find out the reason, right? So, this is called as the primary right it is also called as the spontaneous spontaneous so in spontaneous the trouble is that we won't be able to figure out the reason very quickly right because apparently there is no cause there is no pathology so that is where you have to treat the pneumothorax and right? you handle the pneumothorax and keep a watch keep a close watch so obviously when we say secondary, so that means secondary is secondary to something, means that means there is some underlying pathology. So that's why we'll call this pneumothorax as non-spontaneous, right? Makes sense? Non-spontaneous pneumothorax, right? So it means there would be pathology. There would be pathology, there would be cause, right? Fine? Okay. What could be the causes of both. Now see, as we said that in case of primary pneumothorax, there is no cause. But see, few of the factors, right? few of the factors, they are very important. Typically, when it comes to primary pneumothorax, you will find that the, it is the male, young male, tall, right? Tall, thin, young male. Who is a smoker? Right? Who is a smoker? In such cases, in such cases, what really happens is that it is the it is the rupture, rupture of bulla. Now, what is this bulla? Bulla is nothing, but there are small air-filled spaces, sacs in the in the lungs, right? So these are small air-filled spaces in the lungs. These are air-filled. Air-filled pockets. They rupture. They rupture. Right? And it leads to bulla. It gives shooting pain, sharp pain. But then it is easy to handle. And, and at times, so it gets absorbed by itself. Small air. Right? Because over here, it will be small air. And... This won't affect heart or this won't affect lungs much. And things would be resolved. When it comes to pathology, right? When it comes to pathology, some of the 
very important lung pathologies, lung pathos. Lung pathologies are, these lung pathologies, okay, one is COPD. This is, do remember, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchitis, right? so they will be part of it. Then in case of asthma, right, you will find that it can lead to tuberculosis, right? very common tuberculosis, cystic fibrosis. In fact, this list is pretty long, but if you remember just these many, more than enough more than enough. Right? Now when it leads to something called as tension pneumothorax. So in tension pneumothorax it happens like this that this is this is like normal pleura right and there is a break. Now this break is, right, now this is a break. So air enters, air enters and it will lead to this pneumothorax, right? Air will start accumulating. So that is pneumothorax. But if there is a flap, there is a tissue, right? Many times if the, if the chaku, right, it, it enters, that, that tissue, that outer tissue when it's broken, so it leads to in such a way it leads to the result where it is acting like a one way wall and how it behaves that is when the patient breathes inspiration right so during inspiration it is all good right that that air enters right air enters so in inspiration air enters but on expiration Right, expiration, this gets sealed. So air is not going out. Right? So in expiration, air not allowed to go out. So this is exactly like a wall mechanism. Right? So what really happens that gradually the pressure mounts, pressure keeps on increasing, and when you'll see today the CT and the X-rays. Right? You'll realize how dangerous they can be. Right? So the pressure rises. Pressure rises. It keeps on accumulating into the pleural space. And what's happening? It is putting the pressure on the lung and the lung starts collapsing. Lung collapses. Correct? But there is one more thing. Right? This is, it will affect the heart also. Even heart is affected. One when it is tension pneumothorax, when this is like one way while it is constantly increasing, so then gradually the heart it gets pushed, pushed, pushed. So it leads to mediastinal shift. Mediastinal shift. And today when you will be watching that to what extent the mediastinum can shift, you will be surprised. Right? Another thing, it will start affecting vena cava. Because the vena cavas, they will be compressed. Right? They will be compressed. So the moment it is compressed, it leads to complete disruption of hemodynamic system, right? And it keeps on worsening. So what patient will do? Patient will, will know that when I breathe deep, right, it increases the pain because his, his tachypnea, his dyspnea, right, that, that will start worsening, right? There will be difficulty in breathing. So what he'll do? He'll take a short, shortness of breath, right? He'll start breathing like this. He won't be taking deep breath. So typically when you'll see, right, and that breathe, he'll try to slow down as much as possible because he knows that with every breathe, he is becoming more and more uncomfortable, right. And this pressure, it keeps on building, right. So, yeah, it leads to all these things. Obviously, the collapse will be on the same side, right. Collapse will be on the same side wherever it is occurring, right. So, lung collapses, lung same side, right, lung which is on the same side, it collapses, 
and the opposite side opposite side lung it hyperinflates hyperinflates so it becomes bigger right because body has to compensate so your body tries to compensate so this is what you can really watch now see in in clinics have you heard of that putting the finger and then they are tapping right inspection there are four things in clinical examination one is inspection right you don't touch the patient just watch right say for example flail chest right flail chest and that piece of movement which was moving right which was like moving reverse as compared to the normal breathing so paradoxical breathing that is something which we watch inspection then palpation right palpation you touch the patient you try to palpate right you palpate the lymph nodes right you take the pulse that is all what, what comes in palpation then comes percussion percussion is based on the principle of what is underneath what type of tissue is underneath so if you just experiment on yourself right you know that there is there is liver over here right liver over here so what you do is you just take your finger right and and you just put on the right side tap right this is quite sh sharp but you know that this is there is a solid tissue underneath and when you put it on lungs right the sound is different right this percussion itself is a huge topic right where we understand various types of notes but this is like you do it then and then you understand you do it and what you have to do it is like one finger put it over here and this second hand right it is as if it is a hammer it is knocking it is a free fall right it is it is not like this it is just a free fall as if for your wrist is acting like a hammer and then you hear but if there is nothing inside that means if there is space right if there is space because if the lung tissue has collapsed so what has happened this is the thing lung tissue is here this entire space is khali blank right and if you put the finger over here and you tap it over here so as if there would be echoes right the name which is given for this is hyper resonant hyper resonant hyper resonant sound right you do it on stomach you will come to know right stomach is khali right so this is hyper resonant on percussion that's the reason that one should go to clinics right and try to figure out that can you really the moment you know that this is this is the case of pneumothorax right fatafat just to do and and your your brain will know okay, okay now this is the thing it is just to experience once take your stethoscope and immediately put it into that area absent breath sounds absent breath sounds and that's the reason you should know that what is the normal breath sound take the stethoscope right and just listen normal breath you'll find that yes in coming and going of the air that would be felt but when it comes to this area right over here when the stethoscope is over here bronchovascular markings are there there are all the bronchioles right so air is going and coming so you'll be able to hear that but over here there is no one so here it will be very cold silence right complete silence right you'll not hear anything so that will give the idea ki yes this is and then you can just make an estimate that how much the lung has collapsed by the time the x ray comes right so this is one one very important thing which i'll be writing in and i'll highlight it treat treat every pneumothorax as tension pneumothorax right it might strange it might you might feel bit strange that what exactly i am trying to say treat every patient every pneumothorax as the tension pneumothorax because if it is like you are treating a normal pneumothorax Right? you are treating a normal pneumothorax and giving importance to him no worries but if it is ulta 
if patient is actually a tension pneumothorax and then you are not giving importance to that patient, so then things will take no time in worsening and then that becomes a major problem. Right? So what to do? And this thing is very much, and, and it happened once when we were on mountains and it happened. Right? And that's why I'm telling that it is very much necessary the inspection, the way you see the breath is becoming short. Right? So what to do? And being a doctor, whether you are in first year or, or final year or you are a full-fledged doctor, right? you are a doctor. You are a doctor. And in some, such situations, you are always expected to boss jan bachalo. And you know that this person is dying. right? And it, it's a worst feeling when you feel like I can't do anything because I'm not knowing it. So now what I'm writing, do remember. Because who knows, right? You might save precious life. When you see it, right? I'll write in detail the theory part also, something which you should know. But when you suspect that this is a pneumothorax, that this is a pneumothorax in emergency, in emergency, you can use anything. You can use even a pencil, right? Yes, you would be in putting the infection. It can be treated, but first we need to save the life, right? So in emergency, any of the pointed device is needed, pointed device, right? But best is needle, best is needle. This is called as the needle thoracentesis, thoracentesis. Needle thoracentesis. You will be requiring a wide bore needle. Wide bore needle. That's the reason that in our medical kit, whenever we go for mountaineering, three, four wide bore, thick bore needle, they are present. Right? We won't be giving some injections over there right? with such, such king size needles. But their purpose is that without any hesitation, you have to put this needle straight away into the thorax. Right, these white bore needle and person would survive. Right now, where exactly to put it? Right, this is this is very much needed. If person is adult, right, adult, that's where your surface anatomy thing would come. Now tell me, can you identify fifth intercostal space? Let's say I am having trouble. I am having trouble. My my somehow. Right? You find that it is the I'm, I've got injury on the right side and you suspect that I am having right pneumothorax. Right? So, can you identify fifth intercostal space? How will you identify? How will you come to fifth intercostal space? Right? Question open to all. Fifth intercostal space. How will you count? From where will you count? Which is that landmark which will tell you, okay, this is this number and then let's start counting. Which one? How will you do it? Right? Otherwise, so we keep on speaking and then it gets evaporated. And, and when it comes to real emergency, right, heart pump fool jayenge. Right? You'll feel guilty. Ke yaar nahi aata to. Beautiful. Angle of Louis. And angle of Louis is which intercostal space? Angle of Louis. That's right. That is what, what we'll pick up. Right? So it is because that's the easiest thing to mark. So that is the is the second in costal space. So immediately you'll see second, right? And then yeah, very right, near second rib, right? So just go below second intercostal, right? One rib below, third, one rib below, fourth, one rib below, fifth. So that's the fifth intercostal space, right? Fifth intercostal space. Fifth intercostal space. In case of male, it is a bit still easier, right? Usually, the nipple is in fifth intercostal space. So, it becomes much easier, right? When, when you are in hurry, so that becomes much easier. Now, it comes to, you know that this is clavicle, half of the clavicle, so the line which goes down, right? That's, that's the clavicle, right? Middle of the clavicle, so this is called as the mid-clavicular line. True? Mid-clavicular line. Then in axilla, right? In axilla, there is anterior axillary line, posterior axillary line, and, and in between is the mid-axillary line. 
how to find out that which line is what well very easy very very easy say the pectoral is major pectoral is major right the pectoral is major that is the anterior axillary line lateral border right so if if we really draw it like this so it is this pectoral is major so this lateral border right lateral border of pact major pact major pectoral is major that is the anterior axillary line then on the back side there would be latissimus dorsi right this one it's lats right i always lovingly write it as lats basically it is latissimus dorsi right dorsi so in many of the videos you you will find that pectoralis major i say it's like pact major major and pact minor and lats must dorsi as lats and trapezius as traps right so this one this one is posterior axillary line in between in between would be the mid axillary line so now it is all good so in mid axillary line in fifth intercostal space take a wide bore needle and insert it bin das right this is the point where you will put that wide bore needle now if it is a kid child right so in that case you should go to mid axil mid clavicular line right clavicular line so go for mid clavicular let me write full mid clavicular line and here you will be going into the second intercostal space right do remember this if you forget everything it's fine but do remember this right this is what you'll be doing in case of emergency now you take such patient to the hospital right okay you have reached to a medical center and in medical center now you have got the facilities available so then you need to go for the proper management right because that needle is okay it is only for the life survival because when you put the needle over there the pressure would diffuse the lung would stop collapsing further right so but still you need to drain so for proper management you need to put the catheter right catheter it is called as the icc that is inter sorry costal <coughs> catheter intercostal catheter is what you have to put where will you put this catheter right this catheter uh, should be put at the triangle of safety triangle of safety what is this triangle of safety coming back to same thing coming back to same concept right think of that here is here is our patient right there is our patient and that's the deltoid right over here right this one would be his pact major right over here it would be his latissimus dorsi right his hand is here over here so this is lats this one is pectoralis major right over here that's the nipple so that means that means it is like fifth intercostal space right this particular angle this particular space is called as the triangle of safety this so right in the axillary region right you you have to just just tighten and you will feel your latissimus dorsi right that is what is giving v shape to you then the pectoralis major which is making the chest right so just the lateral border very easy to palpate right let's must dorsi very easy to palpate in between is the axillary region and then from the nipples you just draw the line and that space which you get right this is like a triangular space where the apex is in axilla and the base is over here this is the space where you have to put the put the incision and you have to put the drainage tube right the catheter this is what is needed right this is what is needed because and, and once again the second end of the catheter that is in the vacuum fluid dipped tube right it's it will go into a bottle right where there would be fluid the tube will be over here so that no other air can enter in a reverse way right otherwise if if this is not there 
So then the external air can, can go inside. So that's why this should be in fluid. Okay? Do keep these things in mind. This, this end of the tube. That's why there is a stopper over here. Right? There is a stopper. So that tube cannot just come out by itself. Right? And, and gradually, right, there would be bubbles. Right? And you will find that yes, it is under, under water. So reverse, it cannot go. Do remember this this very basic very important funda now nowadays there is one more thing which is done why do we really do it and now i am adding some extra as if you are you are into the surgery class right two things to be remembered i'll ask questions right everyone should try to answer when i want to put the tube right when i want to put the catheter here is one rib, here is second rib, right? So, and this one is our intercostal space, ICS. Should I, right? This is the, I'll just write say upper rib and I'll say over here the lower rib. Should I keep in mind something or just kuch nahi? Just write, tick, 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 hole and put the catheter in. Done. Apna kaam khatam. Should I should I try to take care of something? Any idea? Should I while doing this procedure? Should I take care of something which is so important? This is where we go back to our anatomy. Intercostal vascular neurovascular bundle that is vein artery nerve where exactly they pass right intercostal vein artery and nerve they are called as the neurovascular bundle correct they all go in one group where exactly they pass from where they pass in the entire rib in the rib right do you remember in the rib we saw that in the inferior part there is a costal groove Right? Do you remember this costal groove? And it is this costal groove which is just in the in lower part. In that they go, all three go in the formation of van, vein artery nerve, right? In the formation. So what you will always remember that never ever, because otherwise you will unnecessarily damage the neurovascular bundle. So you will not be touching the lower end of any rib your tube should always be passing through the upper end of every tube. Not here. Not here. This is, this is nai. Right? No. Because this is the place where the neurovascular bundles will pass. So, take care. This. Right? So, from where? Upper aspect of rib. Right? Because you don't want that neurovascular bundle should be damaged. Am I clear? Right? This is one thing. This is one point. Nowadays, we have got good technology. Right? So, what can be done? Just take the ultrasound probe. Put the ultrasound probe. Immediately, you will be able to see all these structures. Right? So, this is what is called as the USG guided ultrasonography or the ultrasound guided ultrasound guided procedure. So, biopsies, right, they can be done, USG guided, CT guided, they can be done. So, when you are putting the needle and you have got the ultrasound probe, so you will know that where exactly the needle tip is going because needle tip will be shown as a very shiny thing. Same, you will be able to see it in CT. But CT, it takes time. Ultrasound, it is immediate procedure, right? And all these things are to be done very fast. So, it can be done. USG guided procedure, again, to avoid damage and damage to whom damage to neurovascular bundle right intercostal neurovascular bundle that's what we really want right again in first mbbs no one would ask this but when we when we know this now so immediately that point while learning the rib, while learning those intercostal vein artery, now we know that it is important boss, right? Because one day we have to take care of it. Perfect. 
another type right that is when there is no no flap that no flap so it is what is called as the non tension pneumothorax right non tension pneumothorax though we treat it like as if it can turn into tension pneumothorax but this is as such not an emergency and as you will handle more cases you will come to know that yes this is like you need to take care of the basic respiration and then as per the cause right the next one now the next one is what is called as the it's it's subdivision right subdivision of this that is traumatic pneumothorax now this traumatic pneumothorax it can be two two ways one the genuine accident or attack right some an attack is also a, like an accident right or it can be what is called as the iatrogenic look at the spelling right you should know this i a t r o g a n i c g e n i c iatrogenic iatrogenic means by the mistake of a doctor right during medical procedure right iatrogenic during medical procedure now what sort of medical procedure can lead to such things right can lead to this accidental puncture right accidental puncture while doing the biopsy or surgery right some accidental puncture by mistake right and that leads to say pneumothorax that will 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 call it as accidental that is the traumatic while in this case say stab stab injury right chaku right so that is stab injury gunshot right so the bullet traces passes all the way or the vehicular accident right vehicle accident all these things they come under the accident obviously right but apart from this those who are swimmers right those who know how to swim right if you try to go very deep right you feel the pressure you feel the pressure right on your ears but if you have experienced scuba self contained underwater breathing apparatus that is the deep sea diving right deep sea diving have you heard of caisson's disease caisson's disease or what is called as the sea sickness what happens uh, after putting the needle what is to be done nothing to be done how can we identify and do diagnosis yes we'll come to this part right we'll come to all the clinical signs symptoms just that is within a minute and regarding the x-ray so that is so you will see and you will be able to identify and x-ray is something which can be taken again also with the needle inside right so you take the first x-ray you put the needle you take the x-ray after 5 minutes and you'll see that okay the collapse that that the collapse part that has come back right or that that amount of air which was there it has decreased and you'll you'll know that yet yes you are doing right regarding this deep sea diving or the caisson's disease or what is called as the sea sickness say when you want to go deep into the ocean right as you go deep right as you go deep when you take oxygen right into that oxygen cylinder it is not only the oxygen right it is mixed with nitrogen right it is mixed with nitrogen it is necessary because pure oxygen is dangerous it is like toxic thing it is poisonous it is highly explosive right so you have got the got at your back the oxygen cylinder and you start going deep now as you go deep the atmospheric pressure on your body starts increasing means though you have worn that scuba right the complete breathing apparatus but it is not pressure sensitive right it is not the astronaut suit right the pressure of the water would be felt on your body so your body is undergoing that pressure now as the pressure increases right what really happens that this is your blood vessel right this is your blood vessel in that blood vessel when when you breathe right so oxygen is getting utilized right but this nitrogen it starts getting mixed into your blood now because there is tremendous atmospheric pressure 
So this nitrogen will remain over there. As you are going deeper and deeper and deeper, right? It happens like it mixes. Oxygen is getting utilized and, and carbon dioxide is getting thrown out. That's fine, right? You are bubbling it. But this nitrogen is getting mixed. Now, you have reached to a certain distance. Now, let's come up. Now, as we start coming up, right? So, it has to be at a very slow pace. Right? At every junction, we have to stop after a certain distance. Right? There is a formula. But you have to stop at a distance. Why? Because we want that this nitrogen should be released gradually into our system and from there it, it should be thrown out. Right? right now also we are taking oxygen and nitrogen and nitrogen is getting back. Right? Nothing is happening because atmosphere is same. But over here that's the reason that you have to stop at stages. Right? Those stages which are marked stage 0, 1, 2, 4. That way. If, now if there is, let's say if there is a shark attack. Right? So, in that case, it is necessary to come up fast. As we try to come up fast, that nitrogen will start bubbling. Right? It will bubble out and it will bubble out from the periphery and there would be hemorrhage, potential hemorrhage right? on the skin and everywhere. Not only that, right? it will start leading to hemorrhage even the internal part. So, this is what is called as the Kaysen's disease. In such case, immediately, the moment you reach to the ship, immediately you have to jump into what is called as the decompression chamber, right? There is a decompression chamber and we have got just few seconds for the decompression chamber. So, straight away we go into that chamber and the pressure is raised. So, that bubbling stops, right? And then gradually the pressure is decreased so that nitrogen releases by its normal way. This is what is called as the Cajun's disease, right? In deep sea diving, the danger is when this thing occurs, it can lead to lung collapse. Lung collapse. And this becomes very dangerous because when the lung starts collapsing, there would be decrease in the oxygen pressure. Right? The oxygen concentration that starts dropping and that leads to dizziness. That leads to incorrect judgment. Right? And same thing, have you seen, have you seen this Top Gun 2 Mavericks? Right? Have you seen? If you have seen this Top Gun 2, all right? Tom Cruise, Mavericks. Right? They have seen some amazing things, right? Technically so good. What why it was so important that he passed through that, that entire path, right? That entire path. He was supposed to pass that thing under 90 seconds, where we others were there taking more time. Because it is what is called as the G-force, the gravitational force, G-force. Our G-force, our normal G-force is 9.8 meters per second square, right? This is like if we, yes, working on the G-force. Actually, they trained for six, six months and Tom Cruise really trained himself as if he is you know, the fighter pilot, right? But this G-force, when you feel, you understand that why it is so vital. Right? It generates so much of force. So all these, why he took six months of training. Sometimes even, even the fighter pilots, they have to go for still, still more. Because you have to train your brain, train your body to sustain under high G-force. Right? If you have been into mountaineering, right? so why they say, Chalo, straight away, let's start walking and reach to the Mount Everest. Yeah, what's the big deal? Then we'll go back and go back. No, they say, you no, know, there is base camp, then there is second camp, then there is third camp, right? Highest, what, what I have reached, Mount Everest is 29,000, right? We have gone till 26,500. Trust me, the air is so thin and you feel the difference that was. And, and you know, the beauty is, when you are on the top of that mountain, right, you can see that over oh, Mount Everest. But to travel this last distance, that is dangerous. That is dangerous. Every step becomes so dangerous. The air is so thin, right? So these are the areas where the lung collapse is very common. Lung collapse. That's why steroids, steroid injections, they, they are lifesaver. That's why in your kit, whenever you are going for mountaineering, keep Dexona injections with you. They are, they are lifesaver, right? So, just these are the sports, right? They have got their own pleasure, own fun, 
right? And it is amazing. We went to Mansarovar and from there we, we did the tracking and we went all the way up to the 26,000 feet, right? It was a great fun, but very dangerous. <laughs> okay, moving on to the sign symptoms, Ryan, right? Sign symptoms. I still remember one girl, she, she developed this problem so much so that due to lack of oxygen, her retina got affected. And then we have to call the Chinese army, right? And by the satellite phone. And we called up that helicopter and she was airlifted to Kathmandu. Luckily survived. But uh, that's, that's how dangerous things can be. Because over there, you have to move very slowly. And out of sheer enthusiasm, you can't say, Are, wow, chalo, let's run. Now to sida rasta hai. No, no, no. Right? No, you have to go very slow. Because that's the reason in, in many of the movies like that vertical, uh, right? You, you'll see that why they go so slow, dhire dhire ja rahe hai, Right? They can't run. It's not possible. Right? Okay. So moving on to the sign symptoms. How this pneumothorax pneumothorax patient would come to you the first thing you'll find that he'll the history there is sudden onset of chest pain right that's why history history is so so important there's a sudden onset of chest pain right and what it will say he or she will say that this is the sharp pain right this is a sharp pain and it worsens. It is deteriorating with every inspiration, right? Worsens on every inspiration. If patient is not telling you this, then you have to ask specifically, right? So this is sudden onset of chest pain. Okay, I think we have to add few pages. Just give me a minute. Let's add. Okay. We'll see. As, as needed, we'll add more. So there is sharp pain which worsens on every inspiration. You know the reason, right? Because the air is constantly compressing the lungs. There would be dyspnea, difficulty in breathing. So there would be dyspnea, right? Dyspnea. There would be tachypnea, right? Tachypnea. Tachypnea is increased respiratory rate. So now you can say that the, that respiration would be shallow. We always used to do this natak, right? Ke chalo yaar, mujhe pneumothorax hai, how will I breathe? So initially I'll be breathing like, right? There is pain, right? And then gradually the pain, the breathing would be, right? If you do it, if you feel it, that yes, this is how things will, that the moment you'll see the patient, you'll, you'll never forget. You'll immediately, you'll diagnose because this is how they breathe. Because they are not interested because they know that with every, every breath, that pain is increasing. You watch their pulse, right? That would be super high, right? Has to be, na? So that is tachycardia. Tachycardia. Patient is sitting and still the pulse is going 120, 130, right? Respiratory distress that respiratory distress, this distress you will see on his face, right? With every breath, right? Their, their face, there would be pain on their face, right? And you check the blood pressure, there is hypotension. There is hypotension. Right? Drop. And then on x-ray, right? On x-ray, on the radio, radiologic, radio imaging, radiological imaging, you will find the signs of pneumothorax, you'll find subcutaneous emphysema and if there is injury, if there is any history of injury, so then definitely go for the, watch for the flail chest, etc. If not, any of the other condition, any of the other conditions, right? So as per condition or the history, history or the past history. Right? When the patient tells, okay, I, I was having tuberculosis or ask whether he is smoker, etc. So that you get the hint that what you are dealing with. Right? Now, as 
as the collapse increases, right? We talked about it. As the collapse increases, what really happens is the dyspnea increases. There would be severe dyspnea, difficulty in breathing. And there would be deviation of the heart, right? So heart deviates. I'm writing this because I'm about to show you these cases, right? Heart deviates. Means from left side, it almost goes to the right side, that much. But see, when the heart is going that much, right? What would happen to vena cavas? Now, those vena cavas, they are not like aorta, like them thick, muscular, powerful, right? They are quite thin-walled, right? So, these vena cava compresses. When vena cava compresses, what would happen? That jugular veins over here, right? They will be dilated, right? So, there would be dilated and it is called as engorged engorged so much so you'll be able to see big right jugular veins make sense because jugular veins they will be landing into the vena cava right now when the vena cavas they are compressed so those jugular veins they will be dilated right his face would be flushed right so that that's what really happens now it is at this point you'll come out with your stethoscope stethoscope right your stethoscope right there is no big rocket science very easy thing right? as we said that you know that on which side the injury is all you have to do right just put the stethoscope you'll find that there is would be decreased or absent breath sounds breath sounds correct breath sounds Cheap. obviously over affected affected lung second this is why your ear should be trained for normal cardiac sounds that how the normal cardiac sounds they they feel like how, how do you listen right so lubbed up lubbed up right but they are quite fine right very strong very powerful over here right, it is see this is this would be the feeling Right? We can also auscultate. That's what that's what it is, right? This is stethoscope is what? Auscultation. Right? I, I auscultation. Right? Using stethoscope is auscultation. Right? I just avoided that word. I, I thought that I'll tell you at the last. But using the stethoscope, right? You the, the heart sounds they will be muffled. What muffled is when I say how the heart sounds will be muffled, and this is. The heart sound will be muffled. This is called as muffling. Right? You will feel that there is something, right? It is it is not coming that effectively. Right? Muffled. Muffled heart sound. This muffler is what? The second is. You must have seen that many of the over enthusiastic people, right? Those who are not caring for the sound at all, right? They, from their bikes, right? From the silencer, there are mufflers, right? Muffler is those small metallic strips. They will muffle. They will they will dampen the sound, right? They take that thing out. So now that bullet, right, will be will be making so much of sound, right? That even at ratko ek baje, you'll know that that gadha is coming, right? So, muffled sound means they are dampened, dampened, those damped sound, right? So, huh, not, cl not clear means, means sounds are not clear or you are asking something? I am not clear. Just let me know. Okay, right? So, muffled heart sound. When the heart sound is muffled, chances are very high that there is a mediastinal shift, right? Heart has shifted. And obviously, the hyper resonance. Right, this is hyper hyper resonant zone. Yeah, no distinct heart sound, or they are like garbadiya, right? As if they are mixing, not unable to hear crystal clear. Right. And another thing is that whenever there is pneumothorax, na, this is like, say, which was that movie? I think Border. Border was the movie. Right, border was the movie when they they captured that peak. So then 
then one of our very famous actor right he said ke sahab right i think he was that cook rasoiya he said sahab dhyan rakhna ye pakistan army ye wapas hamla karegi right so be alert and then that thing happens right pneumothorax is like that in 50% of the cases right there is recurrence recurrence so that's why keep an eye keep an eye राइट डोंट बी बहुत जल्दी खुश हो जाना कि हाँ ठीक कर दिया पेशेंट जा बेटा तू घर जा नो कीप एन आई फिफ्टी परसेंट रिकरेंस राइट चांसेज आर देयर सो वंस यू हैव ट्रीटेड दिस थिंग वेल राइट नो वरीज बिकॉज इन केस ऑफ न्यूमोथोरेक्स वन ट्रीटेड वेल तो देन लॉन्ग टर्म कॉम्प्लिकेशंस राइट नथिंग मच कॉम्प्लिकेशन इफ यू हैव ट्रीटेड इम वेल पोस्ट केयर एग्जैक्टली सो पोस्ट केयर सो लॉन्ग टर्म कॉम्प्लिकेशंस not much right so the prognosis would be very good but do do keep this thing in mind right. okay so now is the time we we watch all these cases right so we'll watch almost all whatsoever we talked about right we'll watch all acha again no one would ask but still i'm telling i i i would like to say something say this x ray chest right sometimes we underestimate right so what we'll do this x ray chest right once they say ki chalo this is pneumothorax right so then which other position we should be going for x ray chest this is like we'll take a pa view in full inspiration correct in full inspiration will take this is a standard protocol standard procedure and we see we figured out that this is pneumothorax want to go for one more x ray chest to which one which position right yesterday we talked about it which position which another x ray chest should we take hint pleural effusion we use it for pleural effusion also exactly right that is the lateral decubitus lateral decubitus and in case of pleural effusion we we said something that you will be keeping the side which is affected right let's say if i am having pleural effusion on left side so then for pleural effusion affected side should be lower affected side should be lower because then and then fluid would gravitate and the gravity will give the line baseline in case of pneumothorax in case of pneumothorax affected side should be up right so what would happen the right, difference in air and fluid that's right affected side should be up because it would happen that air would go up and the classical description which is ke as if the lung would fall down right yeah this is the chest right over here is the air so this is the lung tissue right this is the lung tissue so as if the lung has fallen down right lung falls right this would be the we'll see this we'll see this this x ray so this is one and third right you can take x ray even in expiration right but only after you are taken in inspiration because in expiration lung would shrink right when lung would shrink you will be able to see that the pneumothorax right the air where it is right you will be able to see it quite properly and finally the big boss that is the ct scan ct scan to i'll show you you will see it once you will never forget in your life right it is so easy easiest to diagnose right easiest to diagnose you just see it once and done okay ha huh, so chalo let's start right there are lots and lots this 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 this, this, this. See, so many so many so many so many so many. yeah good right all are interesting cases chalo let's start with first one hmm. just the look itself right the look itself it tells that one this is chhota bachcha 
right? So look at the chest size, right? A thin. So this is a pediatric. This is a pediatric. This is a chota bacha. And how cold this area is. See the collapse. See the collapse. And and what you watch is this. See the plural margin. See the plural margin, right? Over here, over here, right? There is, it is called as the radio lucency, right? Lucency. Radio lucency means blackness. There is blackness. There is increased blackness. Yes, compare this normal size side and this part, right? There is definitely blackness because there is no tissue, right? It is literally only air. So that's why this is giving this. So this is a pneumothorax. See the effect. Here is the trachea. And it is it is going like this, right? So there is some mediastinal shift, but that shift is not yet that massive, right? But this is a pneumothorax. We can say this is pediatrix pneumothorax. Okay. Let's see more. Here it is. Can you can you see that some things have been marked, right? Few things they have been marked. What is that? This is where just follow this line. This is the plural line. This is the plural line. That's the plural line. So it is not fully collapsed like like the previous case but see this is the plural line so over here over here this is periphery correct this is periphery in periphery there are no bvms bronchovascular markings no bronchovascular markings but up to there here there are but after that there is nothing right and the upper can't see wait 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 let me zoom it I'll first draw, right? Okay. Focus on this part. Removed. Now see. Correct? So that is, see over here, this area, no BVMs. And over here, right? Say if this is the line, right? Over here, BVMs, they are seen. Over here, they are not. Okay? Right? So this is, This is another pneumothorax, right? Ah, see this. Right. See this. What do you see? What do you see in this? Do you find? See? Even the lobes, lobes can be can collapse, right? Yeah, BVMs are visible. Yeah, BVMs are visible. But if I really draw this line, can you see? Right? Now I'll I'll just zoom it and then you see it. You have to compare it from opposite side, right? First see this, or first see the normal one. Right? See this normal, right? Let's zoom further. Ha. Huh. Now you can see this. Right? This is normal. Right? So all the way, all these markings they can be seen because this is a highly magnified image. Right? You can watch this. See how nicely. All these, these are going, right? And then finally, small, small. And now compare this 
with opposite side. Can you appreciate? Right? See this? Right? No BVMs over here. Right? Okay. So I'll just put a marker over here. Uh, so normally you do not see a film. Which film? See this again, right? You can you can appreciate that this is that there is pneumothorax. Huh, like a membrane. Yeah, definitely. You never see this line. This line is what? Right? This line. This line is when the visceral pleura, right? This is the line of visceral pleura. And this outer one is the parietal pleura. So normally we don't see this line. This line. It is never seen. Because they both are so close that they never never show anything like a line. Because the, the, they, they both are so close and there is just 5 ml of fluid. So it is like one line only. And that also it is, it is almost like over in approximation with the thoracic wall. So you never see it. This happens when the air enters and it pushes the viscera, right? And that's where you see this, this line, right? The thing, what is the pleural line? Normally, you don't see. This is, to, to be specific, this is visceral pleura, right? Because parietal pleura, to, that is stuck with the inner side of the thorax, right? Inner side of the thorax. Here it is, another, another pneumothorax, right? And... Yes, see the, see the shift. Yeah, so that much has collapsed. Very true. That much has collapsed. Right? Okay. Watch this. Watch this. This is very typical. Right? You get so many hints. See all these, all these, all these, these are for the ECG, right? All those electrodes which have been kept, right, for the ECG. So this means this patient is in ICU, right? The whole of the lung has been collapsed, right? See where it is. The pleural lining is gone to this point, right, to this point. This entire thing is collapsed. Right? Its entire thing is collapsed. Now, you remember I was telling about that yes, you can have an estimation that how much collapse of the lung. Right? So even from the x-ray, you can go for percentage volume estimation. That is how much it has collapsed. Estimation. So various methods are various methods. Just I'll show you. Right, various methods are there. Right, say there is what is called as the Collins method, or there is one Rhea method. Right, Rhea method. Then uh, there is one very interesting. It is it is called as the light index. Right, it is called as the light index. So in light index, so over in all these things, you have to just do some measurements. And then you you come to the conclusion. So, for example, in case of light index, there is a formula, right? So, it is like 100 minus now diameter of collapsed lung upon diameter of, of that hemithorax and percentage of it. So, if, so this will tell that, see, it's it's so logical, right? That's why I remembered it. Hundred percent 
is when our lung size is full and and the hemithorax size is same so if it is same so it would become like there is no no compression so what would happen it would be 1 upon 1 in 200 right so that would come to say 100 minus 100 that means no collapse but when the lung over here the is is say say 5 this is 10 right in 200 so this becomes cancelled right so it comes to what 50 right so 100 minus 50 so that means 50 percent of the lung collapse is expected right so th this is the measurement so that is what is called as the light index yeah coming to this zoom part right you want to zoom it and see see i'll zoom it this i am talking about right because over here you can see all those bvms see how clearly they are seen over here 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 but over here nothing total silence right now i remove this and see got it can you appreciate right this is what i am talking about There is one more line seen. Which one? I think you are you are talking about this, this, right? Going up. Scapula. This is scapula, right? This one, this one, that is scapula. Same scapula is seen here also, right? This this right okay let's move huh so this is what this is extensive this is tension pneumothorax right this is tension pneumothorax here it is now you know it, right? So how lungs are fixed after they are collapsed? Well, the collapsed lung, once once this pressure is relieved, right? So it will inflate again. Right? Lungs, they have got tremendous capacity. So that's why, you know, people donate lungs, right? So one of the lobe, it can be donated. So rest of the lung, that inflates right and after collapsing they are inside the ribs or on the diaphragm they are inside only lungs lungs are say so this is the this is the thoracic cavity these are the diaphragm right that's the these are the first rib right so this is the thoracic cavity this lung this is this lung is over here this lung has let's say it has collapsed now it has collapsed but as this pressure goes away right so this lung would really again inflate again inflate and it comes fine had i give you my example in covid i got my right middle lobe right right middle lobe totally collapsed my oxygen level means I was unable to walk from one room to another room. That was so painful. That was so painful. But then the rehabilitation is vital. Means you need to do certain breathing exercises, right? There are some instruments. I got one instrument from USA, right? That is super powerful, very effective for getting the lungs back. So now even running a marathon is never a problem. So in fact, I got more medals after post-COVID. Right? So, it's all fine. Lungs, they have got tremendous capacity. But yes, at that point, it is vital that what to be, what should be done. Here it is. This is a lateral decubitus. Right? And lateral decubitus. What you really want to do? You want to figure out that where is the pneumothorax. And this is just the look itself. Right? Immediately, you know that this is the accident. Right? Accident or injury. This is stab. Right? Stabbing. Even the knife is seen. Because knife was deep in it, right? And the x-ray was taken just to see that till what level it has gone. Now see how 
perfect means we should not use the word beautiful because it is so dangerous but how how precisely we can see this thing this is right right lateral decubitus right and we are keeping the right side up right side right because the affected side is kept up and see the tip see the tip of the knife until that point the lung has collapsed right i'll just zoom it right this is the plural line plural line plural line and and see this is the stab right and the lung and the lung as if the lung is falling right lung falls so this is the pneumothorax and the right lateral decubitus stabbing pneumothorax because of stab just remove this you can watch it properly now when in doubt right when in doubt you go for ct scan and just look at it and you know that right this is air no other markings because see the tissue markings they are so well seen over here right over here just the look itself it tells that yes this is this is air correct so this is the ct scan and we see this this is again a pneumothorax watch this another case right that's the pneumothorax in this case still the mediastinal shift is not seen that that extensive right there is but it is not that much yeah a lot has collapsed in this one too it has lot has collapsed right and yes almost the anterior part anterior portion right it has collapsed multiple loops okay watch this x-ray watch this x-ray you'll find that yes this is this is this is the trachea this is the trachea that means this is the massive mediastinal shift right there is mediastinal shift the moment there is mediastinal shift right and you find that this is the ptx pneumothorax the chances of yeah it is very easy that's why it is easiest to diagnose from ct that's why i'm showing you this case right that when you look at the plain x-ray chest right you have to think a bit but the moment you will see the ct one second right just one second so this is mediastinal shift you see mediastinal shift there is pneumothorax so you come to the conclusion that this is tension pneumothorax right you have put the diagnosis you subject the patient immediately for single cut ct right immediately you take a slice and you say done baat khatam no doubt about it right this is 100% tension pneumothorax why see the mediastinal shift how much it has shifted right see right it has shifted it has occupied almost the whole area this is massive right so that's why this is tension pneumothorax so that's it yeah almost gone yeah so that's it for today right so thank you so much right for your interest i like that and wish you a very happy interesting good weekend study well and we meet on monday right now what we'll try uh in what case is lung transplant required three three major reasons one when the lung is totally collapsed right when it is totally collapsed and and even the opposite lung is also not that much supportive so 
no other choice but to go for the lung transplantation right that is one second thing when the when the injury is extensive and maybe because of infection where you have to go for the pulmonectomy you have to deliberately remove the one lung and in that case opposite lung inflates right it inflates but still if the patient cannot do his day to day routine work right so then in such cases it is necessary to go for the transplantation because opposite lung also after some time starts giving way and in in third case is similar to that that is when you have already done the pulmonectomy one of the lung has been removed and the opposite lung has also started now getting affected maybe because of infection maybe because of collapse or anything so in all these cases right to save life this lung transplant is required so we meet on monday and uh, now we'll start finishing all those topics of thorax right like thoracic duct right and and uh, say sympathetic chain ganglia etc right so we'll we'll take care of all those small topics right so take care see you on monday and have a great weekend thank you and bye bye i'll put this file into our shared folder thank you